In this video, we're going to see how to publish our own custom parts to the Content Center. Now the first example we're going to take a look at is simply a motor that we may have downloaded from the internet. So it has very little modeling data to it, there's no extrusions, there's no family table to this. It's just what it is from wherever I got it from. But I do want to have this stored inside a Content Center as some standard piece of data so it doesn't accidentally get modified and whoever else in my company is using it is getting the same motor that I use. So here we have the starter motor IPT from our working files directory. And this is taking under the consideration that I already have my folders created in my custom content center, and I have actually already created a custom content center for me to add to. As a reminder, you can't add this to the inventor ANSI or the inventor ISO library. You have to add this to one that you have generated. So to look at my publishing process, go up to my Manage tab, and I'll choose the Publish Part command that's at the end of the ribbon. We have the Content Center Editor command down here, as well as three other commands. The one in the middle is a Publish Part tool. So I'm going to choose that, and it's going to ask me to start my publishing guide. What library I'd like to publish to, well, this is the one I've created. I want to use the English language here. I'm going to click Next. Now, what folder would I like to add it to inside of my Infinite Skills library? Well, I'd like to add this to my Motors category, and I'm going to put it under Starter Motors. I'll click Next. There is no mandatory parameters set up by the category, so I don't need to fill anything out here. If there was, I would have to map certain parameters from my design to the parameter accordingly. So here I'll choose Next to go beyond this. The next item here allows me to choose how I would like to place this particular part when I'm seeing it during the placement window. Do I want to place it based on material or part number? Well, that doesn't give me a whole lot of data. I could have had more data in there had I actually filled it out inside the part. But realistically, the part number option here is just fine by itself. So I'll choose part number and add it to my key column. The key basically just stands for a filter and choose next. Here I can fill out different family properties and family descriptions. Now when I fill out the family description, that's going to get mapped to my inventor description when the part is placed. So let's just say that this is a generic starter motor. The family name will be starter motors. I'll put an S on it. Down below, I could have a standard organization, a standard for modeling perhaps, or whatever way you want to specify your standard, a manufacturer, as well as a standard revision. Now keep in mind I'm keeping this pretty generic. Realistically I might put in here a lot more detailed information about who this actually is, what the actual model number of this might be the family name. So I'll click Next to move on. And here I can specify what I want this to look like for a thumbnail. So I'm going to choose from my Working Files directory. A nice image for this. There we go. Now. If you didn't choose that image, you would be left with the background image of what your current modeling file looks like. So you might want to rotate it, and you might want to change the color from this gray gradient to a white color. I took the time and created a bitmap and stored that in our working files directory so you could use it though. Next I'll click Publish to finish the process, and you'll get a message letting you know that it has completed successfully. Here I'll choose OK. Now, if I want to take a look inside of the Content Center to make sure it's there, Simply click on the Content Center Editor, and under Motors, Starter Motors, if you have this set up, you can see I have the starter motor that I added with this file name, this designation, this part number, and it's a generic material. Now if I wanted to modify this data, such as changing file name or part number, I can do that here. I simply have to right click on it, and then choose the Family Table to do the modification. If I click on Family Properties, that will launch a very similar window that we saw during the publishing guide. Here we can change our parameter mapping, we can change our thumbnail. We can also change if there is a link to another parent family. Go ahead and close that. If you right click, you can also control family naming. You can replace the family template with another file. You can change the material through a material guide as well. There's also the ability to move and copy items to different libraries if you're trying to transfer or consolidate your libraries down the road. And also, of course, an ability to delete it or get rid of it. 
but I want to see what this looks like as I place it. So I'm going to choose Done and start just a new assembly file here. So I'll click New and go to my assembly. And I'll start the Place from Content Center command from our flyout. I'll choose the starter motor. You can see I can get the part number as my only key filter. And I can place this as standard or custom. So let's take a moment to talk about those settings once again. The as custom means I'd like that motor, but I like to have it in blue or pink or purple or fuchsia, whatever. So I might make it as custom, which allows me to place a custom variation of that in my workspace of my project files directory. If I leave it as standard, it basically takes the recipe that I had from Content Center and it saves it out to my standard Content Center file location, which is almost never inside of your neutral project workspace. It's usually somewhere else on your system or somewhere else on a server. So just keep in mind the difference between custom and standard there. If too many people start doing as customs, you start losing the point of having a Content Center where things are standard. So I'm going to leave that as the default there and choose OK. So it's bringing it in. I'll just do a little bit of rotation here with my view cube. Click to place it, and then right click and choose OK to finish. So there's my starter motor placed in. You can see in the tree, it actually gives me starter motors. And then for the occurrence, it also puts the part number behind it, which is kind of nice.